Welcome back to Sea Spear Salt. So, as you can see, no movement in the palm fronds. It's absolutely gorgeous. I work remotely, so does my girlfriend and my family. So the chances that we all have off when there's beautiful weather is like one in a million. But I think that this weekend's gonna afford us that opportunity. Wind's supposed to be under five knots whole weekend. It's supposed to be beautiful, so. Here is part of the whole production that I don't put in the videos. I will if you guys want to see more of it. But um, the whole gear up is about a 20 minute procedure of getting everything on. We are back in the blue. So something you haven't seen me with yet is that long spear. That's a Hawaiian sling. And there's actually a long story about why I'm carrying it. Um, I'm not excellent with the Hawaiian sling. I have it because uh, I had shot a fish the previous day, a mutton snapper, which had gone underneath a rock. I, of course, I didn't get any of this on camera. And a shark actually ate the fish off of my uh, spear. So it tore the cable, ripped the spear off. I had to buy a new spear, recable the gun. Um, and so that's why I'm with the Hawaiian sling in the video. I was able to fix the gun by the second day, so that's probably mostly why this is a productive video, so you'll see it soon. This mutton really showcases how close you have to be to the fish with the Hawaiian sling. Any more than three feet and it's out of the question. flickering in the distance you can see a trigger fish a really nice one actually and these things will approach you and check you out and if you kind of hunt them down immediately they will flee but if you let them get comfortable and then pursue them then you can usually get a good shot on them So that was actually an awesome shot. Uh, the problem with the Hawaiian sling, or at least this tip, is that there's no flopper, which is a small metal device that once the spear penetrates the fish, keeps it from coming off the spear. So you really have to grab onto the fish immediately, and unfortunately that wasn't an option for me, so this one got away. In between hunting, you get these beautiful small treats and this is a hawksbill sea turtle, which is a critically endangered turtle. And he was just hanging out. All right, so you can see now I have my gun back which was nice. Um, I had to make some kind of crude edits to the gun, but it works. Down here, that's commonplace because there's unfortunately nowhere to get the right stuff. So, you can see as I'm approaching the floor here, there's a beautiful yellow jack, which is that fish that made that tight turn. Those are good for sashimi. And then in the distance there, there's a mutton, and I trying to stalk him here you'll, you'll hear me doing the grunts to try to get him to turn around get the right shot 
So that's a shot I would normally never take. Um, but given the circumstances and the depth, where I was at about 45 here, I knew I, it was going to take me too long to get another breathe up to find this fish. So I put the shaft through the fillet, which is a big no-no in the spearfishing world because it kind of taints the, uh, taints the fillet. For all you Humane Society members, this is actually the most painless and most humane way to end a fish's life. You stick the tip of the knife into the brain, you bleed him. So this is round two at the trigger. Um, I saw him shimmering in the distance, same concept, he came up to investigate me, see what I was doing in his territory. I let him have it, and then I approach him, and you'll see in that shot there, he was not uh, being evasive at all. So this dive is a, another one of those total treat dives in between the hunting. So I saw a large shadow on the floor, and I go down to approach it, and as you'll see as it swims up toward me I realize it's a fish that I've never seen in person it's one of those fish that suck onto the sides of very large sharks and I think he was so eager and confident as you see in his approach here because he probably thought I was a shark so that's a remora and I've actually always wanted to see one of those it's freaking gorgeous still getting used to the GoPro so I missed the yellow jack shot entirely, but this is the yellow jack I shot that features in the cook portion of the video. Alright, so this is my second to last dive, and I encounter a true behemoth, a king mackerel, or a kingfish. You'll see it swim in. These things can be 20 to 90 pounds. This one was about 60, and I wanted it so bad, but my gun is not strong enough. I shook the gun here to get him in closer, and it worked, but I don't have the firepower for a beast like this. Not yet, anyway. final treat of the day was this beautiful loggerhead. Catch him taking a nice breath right there and swim with him for a while. I really didn't want to say goodbye to this guy. Here I give him very very gentle little pat and I know you're not supposed to touch sea turtles because of the bacteria on our hands but I had a glove on so we're all good Alright, so we got a trigger fish, yellow jack. This one's gonna be wonderful cooked fish. I've never seen a trigger fish this large. Maybe that's because of where I live. Um, usually they're about half this size and they're phenomenal. They're one of my favorite fish. This is a yellow jack. I've never tried this fish before, but apparently they are phenomenal sashimi. So we're gonna get these things cut up. Keep them on ice and get some poke bowls going. It was an awesome day. If you guys want to watch the cook portion of this video where I make some yellow jack sashimi, 
I would highly encourage that. Just click on the little box that pops up at the end of this video. Unless you're watching it the same day it's published, then it'll be up tomorrow. New video every Friday. Show me some love and give the video a like and sub.